Quercetin is one of those rare supplements and dietary options which are actually used by the medical industry and doctors to prevent or reduce cancers, decrease inflammation and as recently discovered, undo several hallmarks of aging. And as such, this supplement is quite proven to actually work unlike less proven supplements. It is a member of the flavonoids family of plant pigments, which are responsible for the hues of many fruits, flowers, and vegetables. Antioxidants like quercetin are flavonoids. They scavenge free radicals in the body, which may damage cell membranes, mess with DNA, and even induce cell death. Free radicals can be neutralized by antioxidants. They may assist to mitigate or even prevent some of the damage caused by free radicals. Quercetin has significant antioxidant activity in test tubes. However, scientists aren't clear if quercetin and other antioxidants have the same effects within the body. Quercetin may aid in the prevention of heart disease and cancer. Quercetin can also help regulate the cells in the body that produce histamine, making it anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. Welcome to today's episode of Longevity News. In this episode, I will talk to you about all the benefits taking quercetin can have, what you need to know about it before taking it, and finally, whether taking it is actually a good idea. So let's get started. As we become older, we acquire more defective, non-dividing senescent cells. The immune system ordinarily removes these damaged cells, but as we age, our immune systems deteriorate, and more and more of these cells accumulate. One of the reasons we age is the formation of senescent cells. The senescence-associated secretory phenotype is characterized by the secretion of a cocktail of pro-inflammatory signals by senescent cells. The SASP causes chronic inflammation as well as a disruption in cell-to-cell -cell communication. Inflammaging, or chronic inflammation, is thought to be one of the main causes of aging. Senolytic substances, particularly quercetin, have been shown to trigger apoptosis in senescent cells. Inducing this cellular self-destruction might be a technique to deal with senescent cells that have gathered. By blocking some parts of the SASP, quercetin lowers inflammation. When used with other medications to promote vascular health, it can also directly trigger apoptosis. Furthermore, topical therapy improves the skin's moisture and flexibility, decreasing wrinkles. Unlike internal organs, the skin is also easily accessible, making it a perfect target for flavonoids-based anti-aging research. Quercetin has also been demonstrated to be effective in the treatment of skin problems including dermatitis. It also boosts NAD plus production by lowering inflammatory factors like CD38. NAD plus is found in every cell and regulates metabolism by interacting with sirtuins. It also plays a function in health and lifespan. As we become older, CD38 uses more NAD+, causing our metabolism to become progressively dysfunctional. For some years, quercetin has been used to treat cancer due to its antioxidant and other qualities that are beneficial in the fight against cancer. Quercetin was discovered to reduce cell growth and trigger cell death in prostate cancer cells in a review of test tube and animal research. In further test tube and animal investigations, the chemical was found to have comparable effects in cancer cells from the liver, lung, breast, bladder, blood, colon, ovarian, lymphoid, and adrenal glands. In leukemic cells, quercetin produced cytotoxicity in a dose-dependent manner, but ellagic acid had relatively little toxicity. Quercetin produced cytotoxicity in breast cancer cells in addition to leukemic cells, but had little or no effect on normal cells. In addition, quercetin produced S-phase arrest in cancer cells during cell cycle development. At a dose three times lower than ellagic acid, quercetin caused tumor regression in mice. Importantly, as compared to untreated controls, quercetin treatment resulted in a five-fold increase in the life duration of tumor-bearing animals. Furthermore, quercetin interacts directly with DNA suggesting that activating the intrinsic root might be one of the ways for triggering apoptosis in cancer cell lines and tumor tissues. As a result of the findings, quercetin's potential for usage in cancer therapies and combination therapy should be investigated further. According to the results of a comprehensive study, quercetin acquired from a regular diet may not reduce the risk of ovarian cancer. In a mouse model, more investigation is required.
It also inhibits aldose reductase and low-density lipoprotein oxidation and has been proven to have membrane-stabilizing properties. Downregulation of mutant P53 proteins, G1 phase arrest, tyrosine kinase inhibition, and downregulation of cell survival, proliferative, and anti-apoptotic proteins are all examples of quercetin's anti-cancer activities. The antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-senescent characteristics of quercetin have been related to a variety of possible health advantages. Here are a few of its most important scientific advantages. Free radicals may cause more than just cell damage. According to research, large quantities of free radicals may aid in the activation of genes that induce inflammation. As a result, large quantities of free radicals may trigger an inflammatory reaction. While some inflammation is required to help your body repair and fight infections, chronic inflammation has been related to a variety of health issues, including cancer, heart disease, and kidney disease. Quercetin has been shown in studies to help decrease inflammation. In test tube investigations, quercetin lowered inflammatory markers in human cells, such as tumor necrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. An eight-week trial of 50 women with rheumatoid arthritis found that taking 500 mg of quercetin decreased early morning stiffness, morning discomfort, and after-activity pain considerably. When compared to individuals who got a placebo, they also showed lower levels of inflammatory markers like TNF. While these results are encouraging, further human study is needed to fully comprehend the compound's anti-inflammatory potential. The anti-inflammatory effects of quercetin may also help with allergy symptoms. It appears to prevent enzymes involved in inflammation and reduce inflammation-promoting substances like histamine, according to test tube and animal studies. In one research, mice who were given quercetin supplements had less peanut-related anaphylaxis responses. However, it is unknown whether the molecule has the same impact on allergies in humans, so additional research is needed before it can be recommended as a therapy option. According to research, the antioxidant properties of quercetin may help protect against degenerative brain illnesses including Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Mice with Alzheimer's disease were given quercetin injections every two days for three months in one research. The injections had reversed multiple indications of Alzheimer's disease by the conclusion of the research, and the mice performed far better on learning tests. In another study, mice in the early stages of Alzheimer's disease were given a quercetin-rich diet, which lowered Alzheimer's disease indicators and enhanced brain function. The diet, on the other hand, had little to no effect on rats with Alzheimer's disease in the intermediate to late stages. Coffee is a widely used beverage that has been associated to a reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease. In reality, research indicates that quercetin, not caffeine, is the key ingredient in coffee responsible for its putative anti-infectious properties. Though these findings are encouraging, further human study is required. One in every three adults in the United States has high blood pressure. It increases your chances of developing heart disease, the most common cause of mortality in the United States. According to research, quercetin may help lower blood pressure. The chemical appeared to have a relaxing effect on blood arteries in test tubes. When mice with high blood pressure were given quercetin twice a day for five weeks, their systolic and diastolic blood pressure readings fell by 23%, respectively. Similarly, consuming more than 500 mg of quercetin in supplement form daily lowered systolic and diastolic blood pressure by an average of 5.8 mm Hg and 2.6 mm Hg, respectively, according to an analysis of nine human trials involving 580 persons. Although these findings are encouraging, additional human research are needed to see if the molecule might be used as an alternative to blood pressure medication. Quercetin has also been shown to minimize the degree of muscle weakness produced by eccentric exercise, reduce oxidative damage after eccentric exercise, and improve neuromuscular function during and after resistance training in additional investigations. Supplementation improved clinical symptoms and disease activity in women with rheumatoid arthritis. Supplements containing quercetin are available as tablets or capsules. Many plant-based foods contain quercetin naturally, especially in the outer layer or peel. They're frequently packed with bromelain, a pineapple enzyme, because both are anti-inflammatory. Grapeseed, bilberry, 
ginkgo biloba, and green tea extracts are among the other flavonoid-rich extracts. It's worth noting that the amount of quercetin in meals varies depending on the growing circumstances. Organic tomatoes, for example, tend to have up to 79% more quercetin than conventionally cultivated tomatoes, according to one research. Other research, on the other hand, show that the quercetin content of distinct tomato varieties varies depending on the growing style. There was no difference between conventionally cultivated and organically farmed bell peppers. Quercetin has a low bioavailability on its own, which means it is poorly absorbed by the body. As a result, additional components like vitamin C or digestive enzymes like bromelain may be included in the supplements to help with absorption. In addition, some studies suggest that taking quercetin alongside other flavonoid supplements including resveratrol, genistein, and catechins has a synergistic impact. Quercetin may be found in a variety of fruits and vegetables and is completely safe to eat. It appears to be generally safe as a supplement, with few to no negative effects. Taking more than 1,000 mg of quercetin per day might induce minor side effects such as headaches, stomach pains, and tingling sensations. Quercetin is safe for pregnant and nursing mothers when ingested in meals. However, because there aren't enough research on the safety of quercetin supplements for pregnant and breastfeeding women, you should avoid taking it if you're expecting or nursing. Before using quercetin, like with any supplement, talk to your doctor since it can interfere with certain drugs, such as antibiotics and blood pressure medications. Due to it being an antioxidant, it may interfere with chemotherapies and thus should not be taken if you're undergoing exactly that. Flavonoid quercetin is the most prevalent in the human diet. It's been related to better exercise performance, as well as lower inflammation, blood pressure, and blood sugar. It may also have anti-allergy, anti-cancer, and brain protective qualities. Though its advantages appear promising and safe to use, given its role in medicine, its benefits may require further investigation. So, what is your experience and opinion on taking quercetin either through supplements or directly through food? Have you seen any benefits after taking it or has not much happened at all? Please tell us about your experience in the comments section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching Longevity News. We consistently report on the newest biotechnologies and supplements around longevity on society's path to curing aging. Please support our cause by liking this video and subscribing to not miss out on any new videos.